But let's begin with Amazon out last night with a blockbuster first quarter report beating expectations on the top and the bottom line revenues uh, totaling nearly $110 billion in the quarter earnings per share coming in uh, $5 better than expected. Anthony Jacumbo joins us now. He's a managing director over at Loop Capital. Anthony, always great to talk with you. Um, let's just start with, with how you're thinking about the momentum Amazon has continued to enjoy from the pandemic. And, and if you see any, you know, any signs that, that is wearing off at all and, and, and how you're thinking about the beneficiary that, they, that they've been really from, from this stay at home period. Amazon undoubtedly has a ton of momentum coming out of the pandemic. I think that one Thing that we have heard from investors is they are worried about their ability to comp the comp. You are going to be off the obvious uh, anniversary of very difficult year over year comparisons. We're not concerned about that. I mean, you know, one thing is that to consider is they now have over 200 million um, prime members. Um, that's up uh, a third over the last time that they gave us a number, which is in January of 2020. In addition to that, prime members are ordering more often and they're ordering a wider variety of products. And so, you know, we think that uh, they picked up a ton of new customers during the pandemic. And a lot of those customers, the vast majority of those customers are going to remain Amazon customers. And so, uh, yeah, they have a ton of momentum. And, and obviously, it'll slow down a bit because there's good, obviously you're going to start the anniversary with some really difficult comparisons. But, uh, I, I, you know, I, it's not going to slow down as much as, uh, as, much as some investors fear. Anthony, it's Julie here. You know, as you look at the different segments, you could maybe see some areas of weakness, but in the really secondary and tertiary segments. I mean, I look at Whole Foods and the really failed promise, uh, one could argue, of that acquisition. Sales there down 16 percent um, to just under four billion dollars. That said, that number doesn't include online delivery. And at least in my Whole Foods, half the shoppers there are Amazon shoppers who are shopping for people who made delivery online. How, how are you thinking about that unit at this point? I'm going to respectfully disagree with you. I think Whole Foods has been a home run for them. I think, you, you know, you actually pointed to the issue, which is that their physical stores number does not include e-commerce sales at all. And you've seen this massive shift of what you alluded to, where more and more people are ordering groceries online. I mean, you know, look, Amazon had to buy Whole Foods because Amazon Fresh was not really gaining any traction for them. Now, Whole Foods is a niche concept, right? Not everyone can afford to spend a whole paycheck on groceries. Not everyone wants natural and organic. And that's why they're now uh, working on this Amazon Fresh uh, chain, which is going to be more just a, you know, sort of conventional supermarket. But I would, I would actually disagree with you. And I think that, you know, once again, go, talking about the product categories, you know, the sort of dispersion in terms of product categories, people buy online. Online groceries is a major one. And, and Amazon is incredibly strong. Anthony, there was some bear creep uh, on the street in, in advance of this quarter. Some analysts down on the stock. Do you think the quarter, this quarter through and through, uh, effectively crushes any bear case on Amazon for this year? I'm not sure who those bears are, but um, they might want to look into a new line of work. I mean, you know, look, absolutely. I mean, these were incredibly impressive numbers. I mean, to have this type of top line growth, it's operating, it's margin expansion to be consensus by this much and then guide second quarter, particularly uh, net sales, well above where consensus was. I mean, you know, look, I, I think that it's easy to, you know, start thinking about the law of large numbers, like how, how fast and how, how long can they continue to grow at these rates? But you have to think about it in terms of the total addressable market, right? I mean, there's still the vast majority of uh, sales in the U.S. are still happening in brick-and-mortar stores. There's still a lot of room for the secular, you know, shift to online shopping, and Amazon obviously benefits from that. Amazon is growing like a weed internationally, and AWS now has a $54 billion annual run rate. Um, AWS, you know, sales accelerated, um, you know, sequentially, um, and it, that was not at the expense of profit margin. Their, their operating margin was actually up. So, I'm not sure who these bears are, um, but, um, yeah, I think they're on the wrong side of this trade, quite frankly.
You know, Anthony, thinking about the, the AWS business, that um, also gets us to the uh, upcoming CEO transition where Andy Jassy will take over the CEO spot from Jeff Bezos. Um, maybe thinking longer term, you know, outside of just the most recent quarter's results, how have you thought about that transition and, and how it shapes or, or does it maybe shape, um, you know, the future of, of how you've seen Amazon, you know, evolving over the next five or 10 years? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, when we talk about that CEO transition, it's sort of personal to me because uh, Andy Jassy was in my section at Harvard Business School, um, but clearly he made much better career decisions than I did. Um, but neither here nor there. Look, I mean, Andy has been at the company since 1997. He founded AWS. He worked as a technical advisor for Jeff Bezos. They are joined at the hip. So we're not really expecting any major strategic changes. He's been at the table with a lot of the major decisions that they've made. The other thing to remember is that Jeff's not going anywhere, right? He's going to be executive chairman. He's, somehow, he's one of the largest shareholders. So I, I don't think it's in Andy's best interest to do anything anytime soon that Jeff's not 100% on board with. And by the way, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And it's clearly not broke, right? So we did not um, anticipate any major strategic shifts um, with this change in leadership. Yeah, a company with a uh, market cap well over a trillion dollars, growing at 44% per year, certainly uh, not an issue there. Anthony Jacumba, Managing Director at Loop Capital. Anthony, always great to get some time with you. We'll talk soon. Sounds good.